So that way, I'm gonna start from about there and play it till about there. Sounds good. So I'm gonna drag it into the timeline like that. Just click yes there. Oh, wait. Delete the audio. Don't need that for now. And I'm just gonna make the timeline a little bigger. Drag the audio down. And here I have my low clip. Basically, just some landscape, and then it's zooming in, just one to one. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to open Photoshop. So, I'm going to open Photoshop, and then in Photoshop, we're going to make the actual gun site. So, I'm going to go File, New, I'm going to call it uh, Gun Site Tutorial, and then I'm going to go to default Photoshop size and then I'm going to select both of these to pixels and because my footage is um, 124 by 576 pixels I'm just going to click that now it depends you can also go here to film and video and then at size choose HD or it just depends on what type of camera you have and what, what your video is so I'm just going to click OK right here so I get this little window right here now right here in my layers tab, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to turn the background layer off because we want them to make it transparent and to make another new layer. So now I have two layers. On the top layer, so layer 2, which is the top because I know it's the top of those two things. I'll click paint bucket, I'll select the color, I want it to be black. Okay, paint it. There, done. Then I'm going to go here to the elliptical tool elliptical marquee tool and then clicking shift because then it will automatically do for me a perfect circle I'll make my gun sight circle so I'm happy with that I drag that into the middle and then I hit the return key and then here I have my gun sight I'm going to go to layer 1 which is the layer under it which is where I'm going to do my red lines so first I'm going to click the color change it to Nice dark red. I'm going to go over here, select the, this tool, and click the pencil tool. I have the pencil tool up here, brush. I'm going to leave it to 9. You can even try it. I'm happy with that, so I click con con Command Set. Then I'm going to start at the top, click Shift because it will automatically make a straight line. That will let go. Move to the sides. Oh. Move to the sides, click Shift again to make a perfect line. Now I have two lines like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the eraser tool. There, erase. And from the beginning, I'm just going to erase little sections of the line. So, now I have this, my gun scope, and I'm pretty happy with it. You, you can always do, you know, some extra stuff if you just want to, but put some random lines there, you know, it's, it's your own choice. And so, right now, once I'm done, I'm going to click File, Save As. I'm going to save it on my desktop and call it tutorial. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, you need to choose either Photoshop, BMP, JPEG, PNG, or TIFF because otherwise you won't be able to get the transparency effect. Photoshop's just easiest, so I'm just going to click it. Make sure layers are selected, otherwise um, you won't get the transparency effect. And click save. Now make sure you have maximized compatibility and just click OK. Now it's saved. So I'm going to quit Photoshop, click the Apple Q. And let's see, I'm going to quickly close the canvas. And here's my tutorial one. Here's my, uh, and if I do a quick preview of it, there I can see it. You can always change it later, I guess, you know, erase, you know, the holes there. I'm not that good, but I don't really care. So I'm just going to drag it into here. Open my window again. So now I have it right here. And as you see, it's um, saved as a sequence for some reason. Just ignore that for now. Just go over to your timeline, right click, and then click Add Track. And instead of double clicking it, because it will open a new sequence, just simply drag it in. And then make it fit the clip. Now as you see, it doesn't go over the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I don't want to double click it again, because then it's going to open a new sequence. I'm just going to right click it, click Open Viewer. Open In Viewer, and I'm going to go to Motion. I'm going to change the scale for me to 115 just because out of experience I know that works and then it just fills the screen. I just made it bigger. 
and I see I need to render it, so I'm going to render it, Let's see, render all, both, there. Now I've got the video, and I can play it back. However, I still don't have the effect that at the bottom right corner, I have it saying how far the distance is. This. Now that you can't do that within Final Cut Pro, what I use is I, I use Life Type. I'm going to go File, Export for Life Type. Again, save it on my desktop, call it Gunsword Tutorial, I don't know, 8, Gunsword Tutorial 1. I'm going to make movie self contained. Actually, I don't need to make it self contained for now. It's just all I need to, the only reason I'm exporting it is so that later I can have a preview of the video, making sure that all the text is perfect. So, And if I make it self contained, it's just going to use more space. So I'm just going to do this. Um, I'm just going to click save. That you've done it. See, there it is. Okay, now it's kind of now as you see, it for some reason instead of making it widescreen, it went this. So this is just a little effect I do. So I'm just going to use QuickTime Pro just to quickly change that.